Hello, um, this video we're going to cover installing a W10 server. It's a demonstration. Uh, if you want a uh, virtual machine, this is the way to do it. If you want bare metal, it's very similar, except that you don't deal with the virtual machine. It'll just be uh, directly either plugging the flash drive into the server and starting it up or uh, sticking a disk in there. And uh, we're going to use the net installation disk Debian 10.3 and uh, for the virtual machine we're just going to have um, it's going to be a Minecraft server eventually so we'll give it 7 gigabytes out of my total 16 that way I could give it 6 gigabytes without a uh, desktop environment that leaves another gigabyte for spare um, two processors out of my four on this machine and then this is important if you want to connect to it from other computers on the network and that's to use a bridge adapter and of course if you're using a uh, bare metal installation then all of this is irrelevant so we'll start this up and we'll select the Debian 10.3 ISO and once again in a, a bare metal installation it'll, it'll just uh, if you'll have might have to go into BIOS and boot from the disk or the thumb drive whatever so we'll start like this and we'll go with the graphical installation this time and this is something that uh, is specific to VirtualBox and we'll do a graphical install let it boot up do English United States, that's where I'm at just pick your country and your language So now it's uh, just loading stuff that needs and checking everything. Okay, the host name is whatever you want to be. I usually give it a host name uh, that's unique because I want to be able to recognize it when I'm on uh, multiple secure shells or if I'm uh, on a, looking at the devices on the router and I want to identify which device is what, uh, otherwise it just go with uh, whatever it suggests. If you don't understand what I was saying then you could go with whatever, it's not important unless you look at things on the router and stuff like that. The domain name, I don't have one. It's, uh, if you're a IT professional, you probably do have one, but you probably won't be watching this anyway. Okay, this is for the root password. If you are doing a Ubuntu or something like that, then you're not going to have a step because they don't use the root access, they use sudo instead to connect to root or connect to the access that you need for installing things and then the user this case will be minecraft because it's going to be a minecraft server if you want something different for your username then you can password you'll remember that's not too easy to brute force because if it's on the internet somebody's going to try to brute force it okay I'm in the central time zone just select whatever time zone you're in we'll have it use the entire disk because I'm not 
dual booting you get this uh, virtual machine and if you're running a server you probably aren't going to but you never know some people might and if you want uh, your data encrypted then you would do this selection right here if you want something different you can select manual Yeah, that looks right. If you uh, are using a desktop computer and you have a desktop environment, then you might change it or crash it. It's a good idea to have a separate home partition. Um, even for a server, if you have the uh, data files that you're saving in a home partition in the home directory and there's somebody's username then you might want a separate home partition otherwise all files in one partition is fine then just check it over and finish partitioning And it's asking again, make sure this is what do I want. So now it's going to install the base system. That's going to be without the desktop environment. It'll ask for the desktop environment later. And so we'll, we'll see. Okay, so after about half an hour, it's installed. Um, most of the base stuff and uh, now it's asking if I want another CD if I had was missing firmware or something like that for the wireless then that's the situation where I would put in another disk but I don't wish I don't have anything else and then it's asking for uh, APT for the package manager what stuff it's going where it's going to have the nearest mirror. Um, I don't have any proxy. If you have a proxy, then you know what to do. Hopefully. Okay, so popularity contest is basically what most operating systems nowadays, Ubuntu and Microsoft, they want to know what you install. And, uh, at least Debian asks and if you don't want to participate unlike Microsoft you don't participate so I don't want to participate so uh, I'll just uh, say no and they'll leave me alone okay here if you're going to have a desktop then you would select one of these th options whatever or more than one if you wanted. Uh, these LXDE or XQT are light uh, desktop environments that you could use if uh, you're going to have a monitor for the server and you want to access it directly instead of using a secure shell um, and prefer a graphical user interface. Otherwise, we don't need an interface because, or a GUI. We don't need a desktop environment because I don't want to waste resources for a Minecraft server on the uh, desktop environment. I do want a secure shell server though. If I was going to host web pages on this, then I would select that too, the web server. So I'll just have those two options checked. Okay, so we're near the end of the uh, installation uh, it's asking about the uh, bootloader grub and uh, it wants to know if you want to load it to the master boot record or if you are dual booting and it didn't recognize something then uh, you would say no but basically if it's the only thing going on your server then yes and then if you have more than one drive, hard drive, then you might want to enter the device manually. But if you just have one hard drive like me and on a device, then 
you just tell it which device to enter automatically and now it's going to install the bootloader and it should be done pretty soon okay so we finally finished it's been about 45 minutes and the installation is complete and time to reboot at this point it would kick the disk out or, oh, okay. and since I'm on VirtualBox it gives that if it's a hard drive if it's a bare metal then it would look different I'll give you the bio screen or EFI screen or whatever Okay, and we're at the uh, login screen, so use the login username. And I just put the wrong password in. And that's what happens when we put the wrong password in. Yes, this one will be correct. Okay, so it's first time logging in. And if you have if uh, you want sudo then this is the time to install it uh, otherwise either way you would have to go into uh, root access I use su minus instead of su because it seems to work better with uh, updating it like if I want update then I don't get errors unless there's a network problem of course I've noticed with Su the directory is different, so maybe it's fixed now, maybe it's not. But I'm just in the habit of Su minus. And so now we'll install some firmware. We'll if you decide that you want to have um, proprietary firmware or microcode, then the way to go about it would be to nano or whatever um, command line um, text editor you use could be vim or whatever but in this case it's nano for me and then the direct the route to the uh, sources list and then the sources list so it's slash at etc slash apt slash sources dot list and there's the sources list Debian is very much into free open source so it's going to just have that disabled so we'll enable that non-free at the end of everything If you want uh, other software, the other another option is Contrib. I don't need that for the server, but uh, some cases you might need to add that to get access to Contributor or whatever it stands for. Okay, then control X to save it. Let's say yes. Yes, that's the file I want. And then update it because you've changed what it looks for. And then if you're not sure of the file name or the package name, you could do apt cache search. And then whatever keyword you want, in my case it's AMD. And there's a lot. Okay, so I want to narrow it down. Microcode. I can press the up arrow key. And uh, it'll give me the last command. I'll just edit that. Microcode. And that's a lot easier to deal th to uh, scan through. And we want the uh, AMD64 microcode. 
So apt install and the 64 and then get tab to autocomplete. That's just the proprietary driver for AMD uh, um, CPUs, which is on this computer. If you have Intel, then you would select the Intel microcode. Sometimes it works better. It used to work better all the time until the security updates slowed things down to, due to security flaws in the processors a year or two ago. But uh, this is the up-to-date microcode that's secure that gets loaded at the uh, every boot. And that's about it. I don't have anything else. It's so power off. And I'll turn off the, the thing there. And that's it. Thank you for watching. Uh, later I'll go into NF tables and the Minecraft installation. Uh, bye.